Okay, I'd like to call the meeting for the regular Park District meeting for December 17th order. Uh, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Buckholtz? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Here. President Hartman? Here. Okay. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the personal finance subcommittee meeting and also the minutes of the regular meeting for the 19th of November. I'll make a motion to um, approve the regular minutes um, of the Board of Commissioners of Zion Benton Park District on uh, November 19th, 2015, and the minutes of the personal and finance subcommittee, the same date, November 19th. Do I have a second? I would second it. Secretary, please read the roll call. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Yeah, Commissioner McGuire? Aye. Commissioner Buckholtz? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay. Sir, welcome. No, it used to be an hour early in the show. I usually have to wait for an hour. No, no. Um, <laughs> you can, you, I, you want to go ahead and go? I would appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. You. My Absolutely. name is Jim Hirschenbach, and I was introduced to Merlin just yesterday afternoon by Mayor Hill, who I've known for years. Um, and we're getting very close to building a 15-acre greenhouse in Zion on Green Bay Road, uh, basically across the street from the golf course. And the reason why Mayor thought I should meet with you is because we'd like to take the some of the electric power that's being generated by the landfill and the exhaust, the hot exhaust that comes off those generators and bring them up along Green Bay, along the golf course, your property, and across the street to the Farage property, which is where we're looking at building the greenhouse, and use that hot CO2 gas for our plants. Otherwise, we have to actually burn our boilers even in the middle of the summer to increase the CO2 level in our greenhouses. Wow. Um, optimum growing is about three times the CO2 level of ambient air. Um, amongst many other parameters in order to optimize growth. So uh, not only does that, uh, we think it's good for the environment, um, the advanced disposal is very favorable towards that happening because it limits their carbon footprint and helps their PR efforts, um, but it also lowers our cost, which is always good to compete in the long run. So I wanted to introduce myself. I brought along, not enough, but a, a few brief overviews what I'm talking about, maybe we can kind of share them. I don't know how many people we have here. I'm kind of spread them evenly as best I can. There you go. Um, and it's just basically what the facility will look like uh, on the first page. It's basically often described as a crystal palace. It's about 30 feet high. Um, all the plants grow above ground in troughs. Nothing's in the ground, which is why we can build it there on that fly ash landfill where most people can't utilize that kind of land. Um, on the next page, you'll see, I'm waiting for Marilyn to turn the page so I can remind myself what it looks like. Uh, basically a summary of, of what the operation's about. There's about 50 employees, which the mayor's very happy about. Um, there's also about $12 million of, of equipment, building and equipment there, which the tax base, all the people that are interested in the tax bases I have, are interested in. So uh, we're building it here frankly because of uh, because of the mayor who I've trust. I've had problems in Grays Lake, I've had problems in Bristol, Wisconsin. I'm tired of problems, I'm an old guy. Um, I feel comfortable building it here. And secondly, because of the employees. You know, there's a lot of available employees here in the Zion walking area, which will, we need quite a few, um, rather than battling for employees in Wisconsin or, or elsewhere. So it's, we've been working on this a year. Uh, we were trying to work on a couple pieces of property long. with the North Shore Water Reclamation District. Um, you'll probably hear about our frustrations there someday. Uh, I spent almost all year with them. On some property. Was this the one that was going to be down by the OBC uh, yard? Correct. Just, I think you're better out here. Um, I know I can get it done here. You have more as room. As opposed to the other place. Yeah. yeah there, there's no one, there's, you know, Lafarge has been very cooperative. Um, and, and in just a couple of short weeks, I won't get into details, but, you know, everything's lined up. And they're looking to close on this land by the end of January. Yeah, okay, this is this sounds great. I mean, this is it's really a nice technology. Um, there's not that many. These are Dutch style greenhouses. To, to explain quickly, that's why they're so expensive. 
all the plants are the growth is optimized by computers 24 7 so the water the light the temperatures the nutrients the minerals everything is constantly adjusted by computers um, all the time. That's been my problem I haven't been able and uh, we'll have an open door policy <laughs> yeah. to the schools and you know, everything else. For training, yeah, show the kids. Yeah, and it helps our it helps our customers, the brushers, right? You know, to be known as a local produce manufacturer. So it's self-serving in a way. But um, we also plan to hire a few people from the new school uh, because it's new technology. and We need good people to, to learn it. And there's not most people don't know this technology. Um, I started to say there's about 300 acres like this in all the United States. There's seven and a half acres that were just built down by DeKalb which is the closest to here. The next closest greenhouse like this is 200 miles away. Um, and most of it's on the East Coast, a little bit is on the West Coast. Um, and you can't build these too far south because the problem with greenhouses, most people don't know, maybe they don't say, it's not heating them, cooling them is a problem. The greenhouse effect, uh, you burn the plants out. So you reach a certain latitude, about the, where Chicago's at, maybe a little bit further, given you know close to sea level. Of course, if you go up higher, you get the farther south. But, uh, and after that, you can't put them anymore because you just burn out all the time. So that's why you don't see a lot of them. Uh, the next page, two pages, actually, is the reason why I'm here is because of this uh, easement that I think we're going to need. Um, this is a, another greenhouse, the only one I can find in the United States, although it's very common in Europe and other countries, that utilizes what we're talking about. This built, actually, this greenhouse is partially owned by a landfill. It's built on next to the landfill, and the last page on there is actually a Google shot, and you'll see where they pipe from the generators, which is on the top right-hand corner. You'll see a real thin line, which is actually this, the gas pipe of the exhaust gas is coming across underneath the street and into the greenhouse. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, this, this is a no-brainer. So, Al well, brought this to this my, is my is attention just because the they really are looking to find out if you know example, we're this interested in um, working with them and coming up with some kind of an easement agreement um, yeah, that would be run basically from the landfill so that's coming across the first first hole yeah we go just we would go just in, inside your property off the easement is what i would suggest and we need to this is a very large pipe because it's a gas you know, so you need a fairly large diameter. We probably would, would want to bury it, from what I hear from just briefly speaking with you, which is fine with us. Because you can see this one's on top of the ground. Um, but we could bury it, slight, you know, so it's out of sight, and then just putting it on the ground and over to our facility. Wow. Across Green Bay Road. Under Green Bay Road. Right. So I just, since we talked yesterday, I said, you know, why don't you come? At least then we can be aware of the project. No, this is. Um, I think that. Uh, it's certainly something that we want to support for this community. Absolutely. We do need to get into the mm -hmm. details of it, mm -hmm. and you know, Understood. and un yeah. and understand what it is that we're exactly right. doing and what you need. But we're just looking for some kind of consensus at this point that we want to move forward with looking into those specifics. Now, how how long will it take you to get this project actually up and running? We're looking to start construction in the spring. We'll have progress by the end of the year. Wow. The, uh, the greenhouse itself goes up fairly quickly. It's almost like Lego blocks. Um, and most of it's all from the metals. So where do you take the plants? Do you sell them to local? We actually buy small plants, mm -hmm. put them in our troughs, you know, and we grow mostly t uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, in that order. Um, depending on what we see coming three, what's needed three months down the road. My partner already has 140 acres under glass, as they say. Um, and he sells to Mariano's, Whole Foods, and all these in this area already. He already all sells about $7 million here. So for us, it's a no-brainer. Rather than ship from Ontario where his facilities are, we're going to have them right here as local. I got one question for you. You, you don't build it on the ground. Have you talked to the state about don't you get to up the wall? To put you through the road to the right. Actually, that's a county, isn't it? Well, actually, yeah, well, we'll, we're going to typically yeah, what we do. Yeah. Typically, what we do on roads is we actually bore underneath the road. It's directionally called directional boring. 
and so they uh, don't tear up the road. They don't tear up the road really. Oh yeah. That's the You dig a big hole on one side, you dig a big hole on the other side, you pull off the road. And then you just pour oh, between the two. I get so the Irish rust 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 I'm, I'm like I I thought you would get tear up the hole. I'm like I wouldn't want to do that because I wouldn't want to deal with the highway no. authorities. Okay. <laughs> Basically, what I'm here tonight is, and I'm trying to cover all bases, is to make you aware of it and make sure you don't have a problem with it. Man, so we I, have time to address our problems while I had an next one. I, I personally think we just have to do the, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's. Sure. Yep. And then, but. Right. Have your, your attorney agree with my attorney on the Right. That, absolutely. That's, that's yeah. a big thing right there. Right. I so mean, this is great. You're actually on the property that's fenced in, or? Well, all those, all the property across the street from the golf course is all fenced in. We're on the third property from 9th Street, north of 9th Street. You've got the large one that was at one time, I always hesitate to say this, but it was the Field of Dreams. The next one is, is uh, a big plateau in the air, which is still owned by North Shore. And the third one is owned by Lafarge, and that's the one we're looking at. Is that my, is that my parent's little property? It might be. Oh, my, Is that my, right? I, I, if it's the one that's connected to Green Bay and, and Russell Road. No, it's not that far up. It's about, it's the one short of the last property. Okay. There's a corner that they're still they're still targeting to put a, a large warehouse on. That would be just north of our property. Mm -hmm. And so we're the last of the ones so that are... It depends on where they are. Yeah, yeah. oh, Ours is the last of the ones that are built up because of the landfill. The, the oh, you are on the built up part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So you're on the east side of the road or the west side? West side. West. Across the street from the, from the golf course. It's across the street from Shepard. Dog foot. Dog foot. I can try. Dog foot. Light. Path. Light. No, the third. Well, I think, actually, I think he's right. I think, uh, isn't Cleveland recycling in there? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, the I forgot about that. Oh. Put one off of my tree and my Oh, okay. Yes, you're right. I I like the big deal. Well, yeah. we like it a lot. Like <laughs> We've been pursuing it for two years here. Sounds like it. <laughs> and we, we're finally getting traction where I can publicly speak about it and ask, you know, ask for approval. Yeah. Right. Wow. This All is, right? uh... Good. Well, if everyone, if no one else has any questions, I'll let you proceed. Well, I, I appreciate you coming. My pleasure. You know, and I, like I said, we just have to cross the T's and dot the I's and no get problem. the get the lawyers together and. I'll grab my card because I didn't have one for do you. Do you have any cards with you? I do. I don't. I, well, this company is going is called Illinois Fresh Produce, you, sir. This is for our overall for. I don't, know, plan. I don't have any of my cards with me, but I can. Thank you. I can give you a call. If you have any questions, call me. Right, yeah. If your parents still on that line, I'd love to talk to them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks again night. for coming. Thanks, Thanks, appreciate thank it. Thank you for Early in your agenda. I appreciate that. <laughs> no. We appreciate you coming. Yeah. That's what Mayor Hill said. How much do you think we're going to get for these? I said, how many tomatoes could you use? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was that was pretty interesting. Or cucumber. Yeah, that's awesome. Can I keep that? No, I guess yeah. for the next time you need it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do we? Do we? No, no. No, we won't make any action because it wasn't on our. No, agenda, I understand. So. Do we have anything on the agenda we're going to change? Oh yeah. Uh, we're down to agenda. Yes. Uh, we're going to remove item 13. We will not be talking about a Wage Works FSA right. agreement. That's it. Okay. All right. Any commissioners have any comments? I got a couple. I attended the senior luncheon yesterday. There was a new staff there. One heck of a great job serving the food, letting the seniors talk. So to I for an hour. It was really nice way. It was good food. I had a good time. Mr. President, I have another comment. I attended the um, the special equipment dinner. That was really nice to hang out with those guys. It was 
fun talking to Wolfman. It was so fun. I know that they appreciate you coming to their events also, so mm. thank you for attending both. And uh, yeah, I think the senior lunch went very well. I think yes, the seniors did. really enjoyed it. And the special rec group is always fun to go hang yeah, out that, with. That was, fun, that was a great time. Group. Yeah, that was a great time. There's a lot of things we can learn from those folks. Yeah. Definitely. Just being around them. It was a great time. Okay. Anything else from the commissioners? All right. Um, anything from the attorneys? No. Okay. All right. I need a motion. I need to entertain a motion for to approve unpaid bills. I make a motion to approve the unpaid bills for a total of seventy nine five six four point five five. I will second that. All right. Secretary, please read the roll call. Commissioner Brown. <coughs> Aye. Commissioner Buckholtz? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner McGarra? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay, director's report. Okay, um, just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, Bob has given me a, a playground improvement schedule tentative, um, looking at the playgrounds that we have in the park district, and uh, so I was going to share that with you just so you all have an idea of the scope of that program and what we're looking at and how. Um, you know, the work that we do here impacts um, the programs that we have out there. I think that our playgrounds are um, one of our great resources in this community, um, and uh, they certainly are a big part of, uh, of the upkeep that the Parks Department has to keep up with, and um, so this kind of gives you an idea of, of the scope of what we're looking at with that. Um, so it's tentative, and um, Bob puts a lot of work into it, and we, we take requests from the community if somebody has a, a request or a question about, you know, when their playground's going to get updated or if there's some issue with it. So it gives you an idea of where we're at with that. Um, I wanted to talk about the taxing body meeting. The taxing bodies in the community of Zion are still meeting. Um, it's including the presidents of the boards and the uh, directors of the agencies in the cases where that uh, where there's um, both of those entities. Um, so there's another one that will be coming up in uh, January. And uh, just one of the things I think that's good for you guys to know is that as a group, we really have been talking about, you know, how can we be effective? Can we just be effective um, cooperatively buying toilet paper? Maybe not. You know, maybe that's not the direction that is really going to make a difference for us. Maybe we need to collectively use our voices for some grassroots change in Springfield and looking more to that um, direction to make a difference on um, legislation that's affecting us and the way the state is being run and how that's affecting us as local entities of government. So um, that's kind of the direction I feel like this group is going. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, the other thing is legislator contact. Um, Sherry Jessel is joining us at the state conference for the luncheon that is on the Friday of state conference. And I have reserved a table with IAPD, um, and um, she has committed to me that she's going to be there, and I think that's a good time to showcase what Parks and Recreation is in the state and show her, um, you know, yeah. how we're part of that, and it's a bigger thing than just the Zion Park District, but how we are an important part of the state association also. Um, so that is um, another thing I just wanted to make everybody aware of. and. Okay, so they sent me an email today, and I have to invite all of you who are registered for the conference, and you have to RSVP to this so that they know that the table is full. So <coughs> if you watch for an email that you probably have to respond to okay. um, if you're registered for conference. Jesse, I'm not sure how we'll handle yours. I, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll figure it out. <coughs> um, the also oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention tonight, um, and this is um, 
very new information, Chuck Paxson was the director of the Zion Park District, the first director of the Park District, and he passed away this morning. Oh, he did. Yeah. And um, so um, I think that we need to consider how we want to think about that. Um, I don't think we need to do it today, but um, some kind of memorial or memoriam for right. him as the mm -hmm. director of the park district that really got things started. And, you know, Chuck really had a lot of impact on the field of parks and recreation in the state of Illinois. It wasn't just in Zion. He was very involved um, in IPRA and IAPD um, as he was um, conducting parks and recreation business here. So just something I want you to think about. And um, Bob is going to um, put the flags at half staff, although they've been kind of going up and down over the past month for a variety of things. Um, we are going to do that in, in respect to Chuck. Um, and um, so if there's a question about why they are, although I think people don't even really know for sure where they're supposed to be anymore. But certainly we're going to do that as a sign of respect for him. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just wanted to share that with you since that was... Was, it, was he the mayor? Oh. He was the mayor for a, one, term. one term, four years. Wow. So the guy's a legend in this town, for sure. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's the least we could do. Is yeah, so I just, I think it's something we need to think about and... and you know, take our time with, but mm -hmm. that there should be some kind of absolutely. Um, you know, he had an impact on a lot of our lives. A lot of us who still work at the park district, and you know, have been involved at the park district, and um, so yeah. uh, it's just wow. something to be thinking about. And I will be revisiting that as absolutely. we move forward. Absolutely, please do. Um, I think that's all that I have. Can I ask a question about Bob's list? Uh -huh. What do the numbers mean on um, last update? And I know new and up. Is it the, the cost? Year. No, that's year. the year. The year. Oh, that's the year that they were last. Either new or updated. Oh, okay. So in oh, gotcha. 98, that was new. In 95, right. that was updated. So Buell Park has been around a long time. Okay, gotcha. Oh, yes, yeah, so some of them. Okay. Well, and some of them have been around a long time, but mm -hmm. they put, you know, all new in here. Okay. Right? Like Aaron Park? Okay. It's you. not that it's just got new in 2014. We just right. did new everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Now we'll get on to the next one, and that is... Um, Ordinance 823. Uh, you want to give us a kind of a brief update on that, please? Yeah. Um, each year, uh, well, no, each time that we uh, make a bond sale, those bonds are um, guaranteed through our um, levy at the county. And so if we were to default on those, that levy would go through the county to pay those expenditures. Um, so we have that, that is part of the levy that is sitting there at the county at all times. And so we have to abate the part because we have been, what we do is we've been paying off paying off the bonds with alternate revenue sources. So those are the alternate revenue bonds that we've been selling. And so we don't want to collect that levy, even though it's always there, because that's how you set it up when you when you sell a bond. So we have to rebate or abate that and say, don't collect that. We're paying those debts with alternate revenue sources. So we are abating those funds from the, our levy because we've used alternate sources to pay off the bonds, and we do this every year. Right. Okay, so does, does that? Yeah, does that clear? I just want to make sure. Yeah, everybody I just want to make sure everybody yeah. understands. Yeah. What I'm just saying. Yeah. Does everybody I'm understand? Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does everybody understand? It what makes the, sense now. Yeah. <laughs> anybody have any questions for Marilyn? Okay. Even so. reading it, it didn't make sense. Yeah. But now that you explained it, it does. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, it's, so just how, it's just how that process works. And so we, we do usually, I mean, we have abated these every year. So this is just a process that we go through annually. Okay. So no further questions. I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the ordinance 823 of the tax abatement ordinance. I'll entertain the motion that we pass the ordinance number 823, an ordinance abating the tax hereto levied for the year 2015 to pay the principal of and interest on 2,665,000 general obligation refunding park bonds, alternate revenue source series 2009A, and 2,105,000 general obligation refunding park bonds, alternate revenue source series 2009B of the Zion Park District, Lake County, Illinois. I have a second. I have a second. Secretary, please read the roll call. Commissioner McGarrah? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Buckholtz? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. All right. Next one is the approval of Ordinance 824, the uh, 2015 <laughs> Tax Levy Ordinance. Madam, please. Yeah, so we went over this last month. This document is, looks a little different than what we went over when we were looking at the uh, worksheet. Last month we looked at a worksheet that told us, you know, what we were levying each fund. This is the same thing. It's just the full document where that is all broken down page by page. We took it off of that worksheet and put it into this format, which is required when we um, filed this with the county. So um, we are going with um, what we approved at, as for the levy estimate. We're using that, those are the same funding numbers that we're using for this levy. And um, so this is just the final document. So this is the final. We did the, the we did the estimate last month. This is the final and it will be filed with the county. So all the figures in here are basically the same as what we looked at on the worksheet, um, just in a different format. So unless there's any questions about that, we Do talked I, about that pretty thoroughly, mm -hmm. I thought, last month. So, And, and again, I want to thank you for you guys' hard work on this because I know this is not something you just throw together and it's done. I mean, this takes a lot of hours, <laughs> weeks, and possibly months to put something like this together. So I greatly appreciate your time and effort into this. So any questions from any of the commissioners? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to need to entertain a motion to approve ordinance 824 the tax levy ordinance i'll make a motion to approve the ordinance number 824 sign park district ordinance for the levy and assessments of taxes for the year 2015. do i have a second i will second all right i have a second secretary please read the roll call commissioner buckholtz aye commissioner pye aye commissioner brown aye commissioner mcgarrah aye president hartman aye okay Next one we have is approval of resolution 825 fund transfer from recreation to the general fund. Marilyn, please. Okay, so you remember um, when we did our budgets at the beginning of the year, um, we are collecting our um, tipping fee revenue in the recreation fund budget this year, which is different than last year. That's something that Eric points out usually when he's doing that financial so that we're all remembering how we, we did this. Uh, we're trying to erase the due to funds from recreation to general. And so that's why we're collecting tipping fees in recreation and now we're paying them back into uh, the general fund. And we've been fortunate the general fund is in really good shape, but we do want to make these transfers through the course of the year so that, you know, we're, we're keeping on a schedule of that. So this is the second uh, $100,000 that we're transferring from recreation to general to reduce that due to from due to funding on our balance sheet. And um, so we will do this two more times over the, the rest of right. our fiscal year. Um, so this is just um, uh, another kind of housekeeping item that we need to do to go with our whole financial plan of how, how we're putting this together and um, organizing the funds in our budget. Okay. 
Any questions from any of the commissioners? I have one. Will we have to do this next year too? Yes, because we have quite a quite a do to. Yeah. So we will probably be doing this. This is a, on our radar to do this until that is completely paid down. And so we'll probably be doing this for five or six years. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution 825 fund transfer from recreation to general. I make a motion to move forward to to general to recreation to general to recreation to general one hundred thousand. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, I have a second. Secretary, please read the roll call. Commissioner Buckholtz? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner McGarrah? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay, next one is the uh, school district six memorandum of oh. understanding. That's just part of the packet. Okay, I gave you this copy. Do you have it with you? Yes. Okay, I do. so this is one for you and one for Gibby and one for Rick and one for Jesse. Uh, I forgot to bring that. Oh, <laughs> can I share with Yes, me? I can. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a giver. <laughs> I know you are. Um, okay, so the school district has approached us to, and I think I mentioned this last. Did I mention this last month? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they approached us to become their partner on the 21st century grant that they received from the Illinois State Board of Education to fund after school programming at the district. Their partner has been the Boys and Girls Club, um, and they are uh, dissolving their agreement with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, so they have to have a partner in order to collect the funding from this grant. It's a $5 million grant um, over five years. Um, is that right? Um, $405,000 a year. Yeah, so that wouldn't be $5 million over five years. That would be like $2.5 million over five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they approached us about working with them on this. Um, we feel like we are at um, same purpose in providing programming for kids after school, in providing activities for kids, in providing opportunities for kids to have safe and successful places to go. And so our missions are similar. Um, and we did have the after school program here uh, that didn't work financially for us because we were busing kids to our program so we dissolved that program we really thought the school district was going to take this over they're not happy with their partner so we are considering partnering with them on this um, this agreement is for really to finish out this year of the grant and then we will reevaluate whether we want to continue with them. Um, this is a memorandum of understanding that will go to the Illinois uh, Department of um, ISB. Yeah. Illinois State, State Department State Board of Education. Board of Education. I, I, ISB was in my brain and I was mm -hmm. messing it up. Providing programming from 3 to 6 30 most days. Uh, early on their Wednesday, early out. Um, we would be staffing the program with the recreational staff to provide that portion of the program. They will be providing the teachers. They will be providing a food service program. So we've really laid out what the expectations are for both both partners in this agreement. Um, and it's only at three schools. Yeah, and it's only at three schools at this point in time. The, their Boys and Girls Club agreement had money from the Alliance for Boys and Girls Club, which is their national organization, for two of their schools. And um, so they're still working out the rest of the details. how this is going to work. And um, 
which is another reason that we're just we're, we're not going to jump in with both both feet and um, and we're going to we're going to partner with them but um we're, we're going to see how this goes with this these three schools under this grant specifically the park district is not going to put any of our resources into it other than our time and energy the, the grant is going to pay all the costs for the staff for our staff um oh, well, good. we are actually looking at hiring a full-time staff person to work under k to coordinate this program with the school district which would be grant funded so this would be a grant funded position so they would be aware that it could be ending if it didn't right mm -hmm. I mean, we still have you know we're still hiring these people mm -hmm. so we still have some you know when you hire someone you have you know those responsibilities but um, we, we will you know make sure that it's clear that it is a grant funded program just like we did with the summer work mm -hmm. program that we did through the state um, <clears throat> so we've got this pretty well nailed down but um, just need the attorneys to get there. right so I, I would like to if you're favorable of us going in this direction that we just uh, approve this subject to final review of the attorneys and myself and I can you know Bill's going to have to sign it as um, the president of the board. Mm -hmm. So the three of us will make sure that it is in final form if they come back with changes. Because they sent us a document, we changed quite a bit of it and sent it back to them, and we haven't had anything back yet. So, But rather than waiting until our January meeting, we'd like to just move forward with it if you're comfortable with that. Um, so well, who, who awarded the grant? Do they have a, do they have say I mean because yes, they're partnering with someone different so now the they have to rewrite it, the yeah the, the state grant? board of it no they don't the state board of education has to approve a partner change oh, okay so that has already been in the works so they know that we are a partner mm -hmm. a possible partner and so that that part of the process has already been done I mean are you guys happy with you guys happy with this I guess my question is yeah pretty much we wrote this so that's why we'll see if they have any response back that it would change something and yeah. you know we're, we're you know I'm very committed to the park district is willing to partner but we're not willing to invest our funds in it right. because there's not a return on mm -hmm. the funds the, the 21st century grant goes to the school district they get the money and so they would be reimbursing us for the costs that we that we have yep. and so it has to be our agreement has to be that all those costs are going to be covered this is going to happen on our property no it's going to be at the school that's what it says school just El say Elmwood, school buildings that's Eula. what i was wondering yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna gonna it's Eula, central and elmwood. and elmwood. elmwood elmwood yeah the three different schools what? about 350 kids what so issues have we had with after school programs in the past what issues any t any real issues like safety issues yeah, anything well we ran the program here and it got to be ineffective because transportation was Bus. costing over what mm -hmm. families could afford to pay for the program so having it in the schools yeah there's a you know and the boys and girls club have a model of after-school programming and, and I'm not sure the school district quite has that same model so we're gonna have to meld those together how we do things how they do things um, and we're still making sure that all of that is yeah and the school district is going to be responsible or the the school district staff is going to be responsible for securing and opening the building and cleaning the building that will not be our responsibility but you but the park district will need to to be there that for those what, I mean, why is the park, what is what is the park? Why why do they need to the park? Our they money? have to have a partner in order to park. get the. So grant. they want us to be their partner. They, they want us to be yep. their partner because we've done the program and we've done this before. So mm. sure. So we're a no-brainer to say we'll partner up with the park. Well, district. and you know, I mean, the school district and the park district do work together. Right. I mean, right. That's what again, I mean. Yeah. I, I think that our purposes are not at cross. Yeah. We are on the same sheet. Pretty well. Looking, looking to provide you know opportunities for kids that are safe and absolutely you know, mm -hmm. yeah. so, I mean that's what we're so recreation is yeah. you know a third of this program so yeah. 
you know, um, there is the educational component to it. You know, the community schools, they're, they're trying to wrap these kids around with services that, you know, are what they need. There's a food service component to it. Um, and recreation is a big, is the third component. So that's really our strong, mm -hmm. strong investment into the program. Well, I, go ahead. My only concern that I've seen just from a community standpoint from the past partner, you know, that was there was maybe a, a lack of leadership, a lack of supervision. Okay. So, well, the Boys and Girls Club have, why, uh, which is why that they are yeah. dissolving their. Well, and, and right. Boys and Girls Club is a drop in service. They don't, that's the way they run their programs. And the way we would set it up would not be a drop in. They would have to. Drop in, means drop in means you can come and go as you please. I mean, you if you want to come that day, you come. If you don't want to come, the kids just walk home. So there's no, they the, the kids can come and go. And there's a lot less accountability to yeah. the program, and, and, you know, that's not how we run programs, and that's not how we would run this program. Right. So, and I think that's really part of the problem is that, you know, they did not have a strong, and that is our strength to bring to the table. That's why I think that they have asked us to join them. We didn't see as much of a problem with the school staffing as we did see a problem with the staffing from the other entity. Right. The lack of supervision. Right. Right. Yeah, most of We saw that too when we were doing interactions with them as bringing them into Park District programming. We saw that same okay. issue. So, yeah. And the school district's going to have a full-time community school specialist at the school coordinating um, with the principals and, you know, with the kids um, attending the program and assessing the program. So they're going to take that piece and keep that piece in-house. Good. They're going to take that out. Yeah, so that's why we think that, you know, and we're demanding that, the, the, you know, we're not going to get into a program that is not going to be a well-run program. Mm -hmm. That's just not how we operate. And so that's why we have we pretty much rewrote this agreement so that it's very clear who's doing what and who's responsible for what and that, you know, we're going to do a program that is a good program for the community. The schools have read, your, the schools have all read this that you wrote for them. Yes. They're working on it, I'm pretty sure. Well, I think there was a lot of great questions asked. Um, <laughs> any other questions from the commissioners? What I recommend is that we uh, approve this with the caveat of awaiting for the two attorneys to get together and make sure all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. And it's our attorney and the school's attorney, is that correct? Right, and myself and, and yeah. the superintendent of the school district and, and you and right. the president of the school board. So, mm -hmm. with that So that said, needs to be in the motion too. Right. With that said, I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with the caveat um, once everything is, is uh, finalized and everybody's approved, um, all the dots and the I's and everything's crossed, um, and the lawyers have actually looked it over. So I'll entertain a motion to approve this. I'd like to entertain a motion that we approve this memorandum of understanding with the 21st Century Community Learning Center uh, program with the Zion Elementary School District 6 and the Zion Park District pending uh, review with um, the, the uh, Park District attorneys, um, the Director of Park District Recreation and President Hartman along with uh, School District 6 um, administration. Second? I'll second that. All right. I have a second. Secretary, please read the roll call. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. Commissioner Buckholtz? Aye. Commissioner McGarrah? Aye. President Hartman? Aye. Okay. Anything else? All right. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting for the regular Park District. Dated 17 December. I'll we'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting for December 17th and 15th. Have a second? I'm the second. Secretary, please read the roll call. 
Commissioner McGarrah? Aye. Commissioner Buckholz? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Pye? Aye. President Hartman? Aye.